We're gonna go over strength training for marathon and ultra-based training, and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so when we're thinking about marathon-based training, distance running, hiking, crazy ultra marathons, all of those things are absolutely absurd. And it blows my mind that people like doing ultras, uh, 50 mile, 100 mile runs. It doesn't blow my mind about the marathons. I think that's a little bit more you know, relatable and that you can get it done. But one of the things I wanna look at is what's a very similar sport to marathon, to ultra? And I immediately, of course, go to the track and I start to look at, all right, 5K, 10K, and then how can we transfer that type of work over to the realm of marathon and distance-based running and how to increase mileage over a long period of time without breaking down, without being hurt, while also improving our performance. And I think that's the lens that we have to look at for strength training for marathon. We have to look at it as one, preventing breakdown. Two, improving overall performance. And three, you know, leading to things like improving mobility, stability, and stride length. And so that's the way that we have to view the lens. It's got to be based off of that. So if we're strength training for marathon, it's going to be a little bit different than if we would be strength training for sprinting or strength training for football or strength training for wrestling. All of these things are gonna be slightly different. So looking at it through that lens, that first key aspect, in my opinion, strength training for marathon should be focusing on the number one key aspect and that is going to be mobility. Now, bear with me. When we're training for mobility, this means in improving posture, okay? This means improving our thoracic extension. This means improving our hip mobility. When we improve our hip mobility, now we can lead to a longer stride. If we can improve our ankle mobility, now we have a better grounding period with our ankle. We can absorb that energy really, really well and then transfer that into our locomotion. So we have to train mobility through various reasons or various ways. And that might be doing things like a single leg squat with a long stance. That might be doing even overhead squats with a closer grip. Maybe even doing power snatches, full snatches at a very light load, but specifically to improve hip mobility, shoulder mobility, ankle mobility. Those are those key realms that we've got to work in to lead to that overall improvement. That will lead to greater stride length. And that's going to take us into that second key factor, which is going to be joint health. A lot of people who get into marathon-based training, a lot of people will immediately have knee pain on the side of their knee, okay? They have a really, really tight TFL, they have a really tight IT band, and then they develop that IT band syndrome, or they develop runner's knee, okay? So we have to look at it like, how can we improve this with strength training? How can we improve joint health? We know that this is a contact sport, yes. The marathon distance-based training is contact-based sports, contact with the ground, and there is a lot of force that goes into it. So if we can improve our joint health in our ankle by doing really high reps of tibialis curls or doing really high reps of sled pushes, and if we can improve the way our TFL connects with our IT band, that in turn is gonna improve that joint integrity. So mobility and joint health play a massive role in that overall development long-term with staying healthy. And those two aspects coincide with that third key characteristic. That third key characteristic is going to be improving our power output. As we develop through long, slow distance, let's say we're running six miles an hour, okay? You know, five and a half, six miles an hour. That's a pretty slow pace, it's reasonable. It's a pace that I can usually handle. Let's say that we build out over time, okay? So we have that mitochondrial volume, but if we can increase our power output, then over time, that stride gets just a little bit longer. And even if our stride can get three, four, five inches longer, okay, over the time of two and a half, three hours, three and a half, four hours, that gives us a lot less strides. If we have less strides, we can conserve our energy and we can lead to better times in the marathon, okay? So that's how things work. If we can improve our power output through resistance-based training, we can use things like plyometrics. We can use things like box jumps, hill sprints, even things like heavier single leg squats, heavier step ups, 
back squats, front squats, walking lunges, loaded walking lunges. These are areas that we can really improve our glute strength, our quad strength, our ankle stability, our calf strength. Now that's gonna increase our power output. And if we do plyometrics as well, that's gonna improve our elasticity and our twitchiness. If we watch Iliad Kipchoge run, he is super elastic. He's got a really nice long stride and he's got crazy amounts of power. That's what makes him the greatest of all time. But by observing that, we have to get to that point or get to that point as well as we possibly can by training mobility, improving our joint stability, our joint health, okay, through high ranges of motion or through high reps, and then improving our overall power output. And then finally, one key area that there's a massive leak, our trunk. Okay, a lot of runners sway side to side really, really bad. Then they have this crazy, crazy heel strike and they're running all over the place, losing energy. But that's where dynamic trunk control comes into play. If we can be as stable as possible and we can hold that nice posture, if we have good posture position, we can have better breath. If we have better breath, we get more oxygen to our muscles. If we get more oxygen to our muscles, we can create that ATP, which in turn helps us with that energy production throughout the entire race. And now we can lead to a stronger finish to that race. So having good dynamic trunk control, not only is gonna help us with that posture and leading to greater power output and leading to greater stride length, it will also lead to greater energy production. So we have to use things like a hydro weight. Okay, if we use the hydro weight through various jumps, Use a hydro weight through various reflexive movements. Use a hydro weight even when we're doing walking lunges or backwards lunges or Cossack squats. These are all four key specific ways that you can improve your strength training for marathon. If you need help, head over to peakstrength.app. You can pick up our app today to help you with your overall distance-based training. And if you need more content around distance-based training, make sure you check out our Garage Strength YouTube channel because remember, freaks, if you guys wanna become champions, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.